Biochemical tests. First stage identification. The biochemical tests used for first stage identification are the catalase test, the oxidase test, and the coagulase test. The catalase test. Hydrogen peroxide is the reagent used in this test. Catalase is an enzyme possessed by certain bacteria which changes hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. Step 1. Adding hydrogen peroxide to the slide. Firstly, an inoculating loop is sterilised in the Bunsen flame. It is then used to pick up a drop of hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide is placed onto a clean glass slide and the loop is sterilised again. Step 2. Adding a bacterial colony to the slide. A sterile inoculating loop is used to pick up a bacterial colony from an agar plate. This is added to the drop of hydrogen peroxide on the slide. The black tile under the slide helps to see whether the result is positive or negative. Positive result. Bubbles of oxygen gas forming in a few seconds indicate a positive result. Negative result. If no bubbles form after the colony has been added, the result is negative. Here we compare positive with negative. Oxygen bubbles are clearly visible on the slide to the left. Oxidase test. Commercially available oxidase paper is impregnated with the oxidase reagent. Step 1. Streaking a bacterial colony onto oxidase paper. Using a sterile inoculating loop, an isolated bacterial colony is removed from an agar plate. The colony is then streaked firmly across the surface of the oxidase paper. The loop is then sterilised again. Result. Negative versus positive. If the organism is oxidase negative, as in the window on the top left, no colour change occurs. However, if an oxidase positive organism is tested, a blue colour appears within 30 seconds. This is seen here in the top right hand window. Coagulase test. Rabbit plasma is the reagent used to test for the coagulase enzyme. Step 1. Adding saline to the slide. A sterile inoculating loop is used to obtain a drop of sterile saline from a jar. This is then placed on a clean glass slide and the loop is re-sterilised in the blue flame. Step 2. Adding a bacterial colony to the slide. A sterile inoculating loop is used to remove an isolated colony from an agar plate. It is mixed with a drop of saline on the slide to form a milky white suspension. Step 3. Adding rabbit plasma to the slide. Using a sterile inoculating loop, a drop of rabbit plasma is removed from a bottle. The drop of rabbit plasma is placed on the slide next to the suspension. The two drops are mixed together a little so that they overlap slightly. 
Step four, rocking the slide back and forth. The slide is then carefully picked up and gently rocked back and forth. If tiny white granules are seen to form, then the organism is coagulase positive. Here, a large white clump is visible. Thus, this organism is coagulase positive. However, the result of this test is often hard to visually assess. No clumps are seen in the suspension on the left. Thus, this organism is coagulase negative. Many tiny white clumps are visible in the suspension on the right. Thus, this organism is coagulase positive. Biochemical tests. Second stage identification. The biochemical tests used for second stage identification include the following. The INVIC tests, the TSI lysine decarboxylase tests, Loeffler's serum slope, and the motility test. INVIC tests. These are used to differentiate between members of the Enterobacteriaceae. They consist of the indole test, the methyl red test, the vogue prosker test, and the citrate test. The indole test. An uninoculated indole test appears straw-colored. A negative test appears straw-colored with a straw-colored ring at the surface. A positive indole test can be recognized by the red ring at the surface. The methyl red test. An uninoculated methyl red test appears clear and colorless. A negative result is straw-colored, while a positive methyl red test appears pink. The vogue prosker test. An uninoculated vogue prosker test appears clear and colorless. A negative result is indicated by a straw color, while a positive result is pink in color. The citrate test. An uninoculated citrate slope is green. A negative citrate slope is also green in color, whereas a blue citrate slope indicates a positive result. Here are the IMVIC test results for E. coli, indole positive, methyl red positive, vote prosker negative, and citrate negative. Here are the IMVIC results for Klebsiella, indole negative, methyl red negative, vote prosker positive, and citrate positive. The TSI and lysine decarboxylase tests. These are done to identify Salmonella species. This procedure requires uninoculated lysine broth and a tube of uninoculated TSI agar. The colonies to be tested are suspect salmonella colonies growing on XLD agar. Step 1. Inoculation of the TSI slant. A sterilized straight wire is used to remove a bacterial colony from a plate of XLD agar. The wire is then used to inoculate the TSI agar. This is called stab inoculation, as the wire is inserted directly into the agar. It must be dragged up the slope as it's being removed and wiggled from side to side across the agar surface. Step 2. Inoculation of the lysine broth. The same wire, which still carries residual bacteria on it, is then used to inoculate the lysine broth. This is done simply by dipping the wire into the broth and stirring it around. Note that the wire is not held in the Bunsen flame between the two inoculations. The two tests are then incubated for 16 to 18 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. The lid of the TSI agar is left loose during incubation. Possible results. Uninoculated lysine broth is clear and dull purple in colour. A positive lysine decarboxylase result is bright purple and turbid, while a negative result is straw coloured. The TSI result for Salmonella appears as a red alkaline slant and a yellow acid butt, with black hydrogen sulphide superimposed on both colour reactions. The TSI tube for E. coli appears as follows a yellow acid slant and butt, and no black hydrogen sulphide. Loeffler's serum slope. An uninoculated Loeffler's serum slope is smooth and non-pitted. A negative result also appears smooth and non-pitted. 
a positive result has a dip or pit in the smooth surface of the agar slant. This pit reveals the presence of protease-producing bacteria, as enzymes produced by the bacteria digest the proteins present in the serum slant. Motility test. This detects whether bacteria are motile or non-motile. A specific kind of agar, known as motility agar, is needed for this procedure. It is semi-solid and contains tetrazoleum salts. Step 1. Picking up a bacterial colony with a straight wire. Firstly, a straight wire is sterilised. Then it is used to pick up an isolated colony from an agar plate. Step 2. Stab inoculating the motility agar. The motility agar is then stab inoculated with a straight wire. Wherever the bacteria grow, they produce an insoluble red pigment from the tetrazoleum salts. Thus, if bacteria are motile and spread throughout the tube, this will appear as a colour change. Possible results. Uninoculated motility agar appears pale and straw coloured. Non motile bacteria appear as a dark reddish line along the initial area of inoculation, as they can't spread out. Motile bacteria turn the whole tube a cloudy red colour as they move throughout the agar.